<laughs> okay, 21. Which of the following graphs could be the graph of the inverse of f of x equals 3 raised to the x power? 3 raised to the x power, that's exponential growth, right? Um, a is exponential growth, right? But we want the inverse of that. Remember the graph of an inverse is a reflection across y equals x line. So it would reflect across y equals x, which is this, the inverse would. So if we reflected this across this line, it would be d, wouldn't it? Remember the inverse of a growth, exponential growth, is a log graph. Anybody have any questions? So inverse of um, 3 to the x exponent is a, a log function? Yes. Okay. So the inverse reflects over the xy line, x equals the y line? Yes. Always the inverse always reflects across that line. Any other questions? Okay, 22. Um, which statement describes what happens to the graph of y equals blah, 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 uh, when the value of h is changed from 5 to negative 2? Okay. So if we're going to change the value of h from a 5 to a negative 2, in other words, we're going to subtract 7, what's it going to do? It's going to be plus 2. It's because it's inside the parentheses. It's going to change from this. Um, x minus 5? Yeah, to yeah. x plus 2. x minus 5. And it's going to change to x plus 2. We can see. to the right. So this would originally be 5 units to the right, yeah. right? And this would originally be 2 units to the left. Units to the left. So from here to here, then, it would go to seven the left, units. Yeah. Seven, seven units. units. See. Uh, there. What I'm saying was, this is originally five units to the right. Mm. And this is two units to the left. So the difference from here to here would be seven units to the left. Questions on that one? Okay. What number is that, 22? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, uh, 23. Um, this the three right here, you need to change that to a two. All right, so let's see if we can figure out a pattern from the original points to the prime points, the points that are moved. The x is going from negative two to one, it's going three to the right. And the y is going 2 down. Look at b. 3 to the right, 2 down. c. 3 to the right, 2 down. 3 to the right, 2 down. 3 to the right, 2 down. So which function would move our original 3 to the right and 2 down? A. It would be a, wouldn't it? 3 to the right and 2 down. Are you okay? Yeah. All right, 24, evaluate the expression f of g of 2 using the values given in the table. All right, so we're going to take 2 and plug it into the g function. Yes? That's going to give us some value. We're going to take that value and then plug that into the f function. So if we plug 2 into the g function, 
Our, in other words, our x, we're taking an x of 2 and plugging it into the g function. What's that going to give me? Negative 1. If I plug 2 into the g function, that's going to give me negative 1. Is that okay with that? I'm going to take that negative 1 now and plug that into the f function. So my negative 1 is now my new x that's going into the f function. So I am going to end up with 3. Questions on 24? Spencer, put your head now before you fall. Uh, actually, I'm keeping up. I'm just taking the breaks in between. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peter has completely given up. Yes. Okay. All right. Any questions on 24 before we move on? 25. Um, if f of x is that, g of x is that, identify the domain of the function, find the, okay. So they want us to find the composition of the functions first. Um, f of x is equal to 2 over x plus 3, and g of x is equal to 1 over x. And they want us to find f of g of x. So I'm going to take the g of x and plug it into the f. I'm going to take this and plug it into here. So that's going to be 2 over 1 over x plus 3. Um, let's try to clean that up a little bit. In order to add or subtract fractions, I need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply this by x over x. So that's going to give me 2 over uh, 1 over x plus 3x over x. So now I can combine those two. So it's 2 over 1 plus 3x over x. And now I've got a fraction divided by a fraction. What's the rule? We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be 2 over 1 times x over 1 plus 3x. So that's 2x over 1 plus 3x. Now, it says, what is the domain of this? Um, what would make this denominator equal to 0? Nothing. Negative 1 third. Negative 1 third? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I know x cannot equal negative 1 third. How come you would have to plus 1? Well, no, negative one third times three is negative one. Yeah. Yeah, plus, one the plus one is two. Negative one plus one is two. I'm sure he knows that. <laughs> I do want to say that. <laughs> Just right? Negative one third times three is negative one. Yeah. Yeah. One plus negative one. I was thinking of zero. Okay. Um, <laughs> you also need to include You also need to include whatever would make these undefined also. Um, so zero. x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal negative 3. So everything but that. D? I'm trying to figure out why negative 3 is not in there. Do you still care about the original function after you plug in O in? Oh, oh, hold on. This function starts here. Yeah. F of G starts here. So you just don't so care So it about can't be zero because of this. And then it can't be the negative one third because of this. But it can be negative three, this part here. So it's going to be D. He's sleeping and he's getting more attention than I am. Tell him, Peter, it's their GPAs, right? Yeah, not mine. <laughs> All right, any questions on 25? So it's D. The function actually starts here. 
So it can't be zero because of that, and it can't be negative one third because of that. All right, 20, oh.